When it comes to email, I've tried it all. I've tried lots of different tools and services and techniques for managing email. My system, my process generally changes, you know, it'll, it, I'll be refining my process all the time. Currently, my process for managing email is that I will check email and sort through email first thing in the morning. Now, this is counterintuitive to a lot of the advice that you'll hear. And really, you've got to do what works for you. Some people will say, don't check email first thing. They'll say, work on your most important tasks, come back to email at 10, 11, 12 o'clock in the day. For me personally, I don't like to have email kind of weighing on me uh, mentally throughout the day. So I actually like to check email, get it sorted first thing in the day. That's also gonna help me to define and identify some of my priorities for the day. And I batch my email through, uh, throughout the day. So I'll check email first thing. I'll then, once I'm done, completely shut down email. I won't check it again until the afternoon. During that time as well, on my phone and on my Mac, I have no notifications turned on. There are no sounds, there are no alerts, there are no badges on the icon, there's nothing. I have, even when the app is open, I have no way of knowing if I get a new email unless I manually go to my email client and check. And I like it that way because then there's no way that email can become a distraction to me during the day if an email comes in, I'm not gonna get prompted. And it, it really holds me accountable to actually checking email at those batch times rather than allowing myself to be distracted. So that's a really important thing is actually keeping all notifications turned off. When I receive email, I got all, a bunch of new emails coming in. So then it's time to triage and sort through those emails. There's a number of actions that you can take. If you receive an email that you just need to kind of read and it's just good to know information, read it, archive it, done. If you receive an email and you want to kind of keep that information stored for later, you can keep it in a mailbox for just like a reference mailbox, or I actually keep some important invoices, documents, any important details that I've received by email, I'll actually forward that to my Evernote account, which is my digital brain where I store and collect a lot of reference material. If I receive an email that I need to take some sort of action on, maybe I need to come back to it later, I'll actually forward that email to Asana. You can e forward emails to Asana. Your task list, if you use something else, probably has some kind of email integration or some kind of forwarding feature. So sending emails to your task list is a great way to actually turn those emails into actionable things that you can then do. And then when it's on the task list, then I'll actually block out time on my calendar. If it's something big that requires a fair bit of time, I'll actually block out time on my calendar to, to work on that thing. If the email is something quick and easy that I can respond to in less than a few minutes, maybe in just a couple of lines. And that's the case with most of my responses. I'll try and keep them very brief. But if it's something that I can respond to very quickly, I'll respond and I will archive my email. The biggest thing here is to not treat email like a to-do list, is to actually use email as a communication service, which is what it's designed for. And if you need to take some action on it, send the email to your task list or store the email in some other uh, folder in Dropbox or Evernote. Email is not a task list and so you should actually send the email to the appropriate places based on what you need to do with that email. At the moment I'm using uh, the iOS mail app on my iPhone and I'm using the Mac mail client on my Mac. I've tried a bunch of different clients. There are some really good options out there. I really like Newton Mail for example, but I always keep coming back to uh, the Apple mail client because it's very simple, easy to use, it's fast, and it integrates well with my phone and Mac. But I'm now actually using a third-party plugin called Mail Butler. It's not a separate client. This is actually an extension of Mail. So you install it, it installs on top of the Mac Mail client. And it means that I can get extra features like read receipts, which are really important, uh, snoozing emails, sending emails later. I can even track when people up, uh, open certain attachments that I've sent. And there's a few other features in there as well. It allows me to very quickly send emails to Asana, to Evernote, those kind of places. So if you're a, a Mac mail user, I highly recommend Mail Butler, which is the service that I'm using right now and um, very much enjoying it. So there you are, that is my process for managing email. If you need more help with productivity, then sign up to my free three-part video training series where I'll walk you through the essentials of productivity, common mistakes that people make, and I'll talk about the tools that I use to be more productive. Head on over to paulminers.com training.